I, I saw on Twitter, people were like, I, I saw this tweet, they were like, man, imagine someone put a gun to your head to like name free Bow Wow songs. That's easy. You're just right you know what I mean? I love, you know what I mean? A lot of people be slandering Bow Wow. It's like, yo. Hey, today I am interviewing Nian Tut, an Australian rapper who just dropped his latest project, 2000 Baby, just over a month ago. And um, I met Nian Tun on Twitter a long time back, and he's a good friend of mine. So I really hope you do enjoy our interview together, and please show his music some support because I think he really deserves it. And yeah, without further ado. And so, can you tell me about yourself? How are you? Uh, yeah, well, I mean. I'm good. Uh, I'm Janssen, uh one half of uh, Bad Pressure, Brisbane, Australia duo. Uh, I make hip hop music, you know. Uh, I just we, I just came from a studio session next door, and I'm chilling in a fucking meeting room <laughs> in a youth space that's in our city. Yeah. Oh, so so you're in the studio and people are still recording on the other end, is it? Yeah, I don't know if you can hear any of it, but um, so my other half of Bad Pleasure, Dust, is still next door. He's just mixing a song we just did for new Bad Pleasure music. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, we because we come to this new space um, every now and then because it's free and it's cool. A lot of good energy, a lot of met like a lot of cool people here. Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, how often do you record then? Um, not as much as I'd like to. Yeah, like it slowed down relatively, especially since we wrapped up 2000 Baby last year, put that out. Um, yeah, now we're just getting back into it. We've been rehearsing for a show that we have next month on the 26th of Feb. So, excited for that. It's been a while since we've had a show. Yeah, big things coming. And yeah. yeah. Because there are big things coming, so I want to talk about your latest EP as well, like 2000 Baby. So yeah. it's, a, it's a very striking name actually for me because, you know, I was kind of, I kind of grew up in the 2000s as well. So yeah, I wanted to know like <laughs> what the reason was for the name behind this project. Uh, so we chose 2000 Baby because I wanted a project, I wanted to do a project that was inspired by the early 2000s, uh, yeah, the early to mid 2000s. Um, and I went through, so I, originally I just had like title ideas and it was just like a whole list of them. So there was like Air Force Ones, um, the Nokia, um, Motorola Razor, right. fucking, um, what else? Flip phone was actually, uh, one of the names I had for the EP, but then it ended up being a single. Um, and I don't know, I just chose, I chose 2000 Baby because it just felt right. Um, I'm, uh, I was literally born in 2000, so I was like, I'm quite literally a 2000 <laughs> baby. So I was like, yeah, it just feels right. It felt right. Um, and yeah. yeah so it kind of just feels like your life as a title then. And, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. And you know, since you're inspired so much by 2000s things, right? Is there anything yeah. in particular that really influenced you? Um, well, there's a, there's a few things. Um, I don't know, because I wanted to draw inspiration from like, I, I guess more happier moments from my childhood, because in my early music, so my like pre bad question music, a lot of it was just like drenched in like this sort of um, instrument pain and stuff. And so it, it, even like, because I released a single called The Calm, uh, I think 2020, I believe, the end of 2020. And I was like, in a good space after that release and i was like okay i'm feeling good i'm like i want to make some fucking bops right <laughs> i want to make some shit that like just you can play in your car and like play out of some like really loud speakers um so a lot of that was from because I, I listened to like a lot of mike jones right um a lot of bow wow a little bow wow <laughs> you know I, I saw on twitter people were like i, I saw this tweet they're like man Imagine someone put a gun to your head to like name free Bow Wow songs. That's easy. You're just right you know what I mean? I love, you know what I mean? A lot of people be slandering Bow Wow. And it's like, yo, people don't understand, right? Now see, cause you know, I, I was I was born 
you know, I was quite young during the like the hype of like everything in the 2000s. Yes. But what I remember is that my brothers used to play, you know, a lot of the big songs at the time, Ja Rule, Akon, 50 Cent, of course. Mm. So that time is it's, it's, uh, I have a lot of fun memories and a lot of those memories are connected through to like the music. So like when I think of like, you know, any of those songs, I, it, it connects me to just like, I don't know, like a, a real nostalgic time that I don't really remember, but I remember. I mean, a, 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 lot, a lot of that kind of just influenced everything I wanted to do, I put into the EP and like the mixtape I had prior to the EP. Um, and yeah, there's, there's just a bunch of different shit. Right, it's just the feelings of that decade just put into it. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever revisit these things though? Like, I mean, of course you revisit the music, but let's say like (laughs) the Xboxes or like flip phones. Uh, You go out of your way to just use them to like recapture the feeling. Mm. I, so when I was marketing for flip phone, I tried so hard to find like a really good authentic flip phone (laughs) from like the 2000s and I'm like, I, I don't understand why it was so difficult to find one. And I found one and it wasn't really 2000s enough, but I still used it anyway, because it was like, it was the only thing I had. And I was just like, fuck it. It, it, it doesn't work, but I'm like, ah, all right. It's a prop. I use it as a prop. So it's in the flip phone uh, cover art and single um, and promo I did for it. It's like getting a slice of history from a time mm. that you just felt comfortable in. Yeah. 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 And also, since you mentioned it a lot, I wanted to ask you about flip phone as well. Because, <laughs> I mean, we follow each other on Twitter and yeah. you were really pushing for flip phone for uh, three, four months, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was like quite a long time. See, <laughs> see, the thing with flip phone was, right, when we did it, it was like back in, I think, April 2021, when we had like the first like demo of it. And I previewed it and like, I was like, cool, it's whatever. Um, and then like a few people were like, man, you need to drop this, you need to drop this. We had like a small show uh, and then I played it there and they're like, yeah, you got to drop this. So for like, I was like, all right, cool. For the next few months, I'd, let me just finish it. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't up to the standard that I wanted it to be. Mm. And so, you know, we, we spent like the next few months reco- recording, re-recording, mixing, and then and, like trying to get the cover art and the promo done. And so while we were doing the actual promo leading up to it, the song was still not finished. Right. <laughs> uh, at least, I mean, it, it, uh-huh. like we, it, it, I could have just released it, but I just, I, I didn't feel like it was where I wanted it to be. But we did the promo, we, we uh, created the Young Baby T character um, as like a joke, <laughs> but people referred to me as that sometimes. I'm like, okay, I mean, it's my Twitter handle. And I'm like, you know what, whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah, the premise for that because it's it was I don't know it was the first time we made a song that was just like as fast paced as like thumping. There was a lot of like a, like bass in that song, mm. um, and that's what I wanted. I wanted a song with a lot of bass, and yeah, I think by the time I finally released it, it probably people were kind of like I don't know the reception wasn't as great as I was expecting, but it, you know it's fine. It's cool. A lot of people loved it. You know, what I mean, it's it's a yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a great song though, and yeah, honestly, you. I think it is a standout on 2000 Baby. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um. <laughs> but I also want to ask you though, because I might be wrong about this, but for flip phone, was there any like Pharrell influences because of the? Yeah, the beat, right. Yeah. Uh, so during the recording of the EP and like that so, so my mate Doth, so the other half of that pressure, he produced it. Um he sent me that like, he made a bunch of beats one day and he like showed me it because I already had the idea of like flip because it was like like I said, it was originally supposed to be the EP title like one of the EP titles I had. Uh, and then I was like, wait, I'm I I so I knew already I wanted to Flip Phone to be the title, like the lead single. Mm. I wanted a song to be called Flip Phone. I'm like, yes. I don't know why, but I was just like, yes, Flip Phone is the one. And I was like to him, yo, I need a song. I need like a really pumping that song. So he played me like these beats. So I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And he played me the Flip Phone beat. And I was like, this is the one. This is the one. I'm like, yo, we got to listen to Flip Phone. And, I, and so he did a couple like um, references for like the hook and stuff. And I'm like, all right, cool. We'll use that and then 
Um, but yeah, definitely, yeah, he's so the Neptunes, Timberland, a lot of that was in rotation because we love Neptunes, we love Pharrell. I have a mixtape called Neptunes Prodigy. Right. You know, yes. So it, 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 it um, we, we love, yeah, we love the Neptunes, man. Chad Hugo, Pharrell, fucking geniuses. Timberland, of course. Mm. You know, T- Timberland, outside of the music, bit of a weird guy, but like, his, music his production, good. yeah, you know, what I mean, I love his music. The impact, the influence—it's it's definitely strong. Um, I, I, I don't know if it was intentional, but um, it, it was what we were listening to. So. Yeah. Right. And also, I mean, regarding the reception of uh, Split Form as well, right? I think even if it's not as great as you think, I I feel like it's an essential track in your discography because it really just channels that two thousand baby. Yeah. You, that 2000s yeah. like, era that is also kind of modern at the same time mm. so thank you. Uh, I still think it's a great track man thank you thank you and now you are trying to I guess bring back certain elements of the 2000s mm. into like our current day music then yeah I'm trying to bring back Crunk man I remember when <laughs> Duke Deuce uh, Duke Deuce dropped that song Crunk Ain't Dead I'm like yes, yes. Crunk Ain't Dead that's such a good song man he a crazy dancer Oh, I love Duke Deuce. <laughs> um, no, but like, yeah, yeah. Because what I wanted to do was just like, re- it's not reinvent, but like just kind of like, okay, bring these sounds and then just like revitalize them. Put like my, like that Yantun, that pressure twist on them. And I feel like I achieved that. Um, even if, yeah, I feel like I achieved it. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah you did, you did. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, aside from like crunk music, right, is there like one particular music trend from the 2000s that you wish deserves a comeback? Uh, well, I mean, it kind of goes with crunk, but like crunk and R&B, when like when Sierra came out with goodies mm. and like Usher with, yeah, that, that fusion of crunk and R&B was great. Me and Soul, um, I really want that, like... I don't because I didn't I didn't I didn't be keeping up with a lot of genres or like just the music scene in general as much as I feel like I should be especially as an artist. Um, but like particular like Nia Nia Soul, like Music Soul Child is one of my favorite artists of all time. Mm-hmm. His first like three to four albums, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, like Amazing. yeah, you know like his hit single uh, I think Just Friends right off his first. Album, I think um I actually we have a we we sampled that and we have a beat for it for a bad push song but we haven't written to it yet but when we do it's gone crazy hopefully earlier you mentioned like stuff like Sierra's goodies or Usher's yeah, like, yeah. um those are like more melodic cuts and on 2000 baby you do have some melodic cuts as well especially yeah. stage like you know the last track that is just my favorite song from the EP I just uh, I actually had it on repeat for like two days, I think, <laughs> after listening to the EP because I just uh, love this chill, mm. sing songy vibe to. Thank you. Like, thank you. <laughs> oh, I love Sage. Uh, you see, yeah, Sage, Sage um, the recording of it is definitely my favorite of any song I've ever recorded. Um, so there's three songs. Yeah, there's, so there's three songs on that project that um, was produced by my friend Brandon, also known as Lemonade Baby. Um, he he doesn't do hip hop, but he's like a pop sort of artist. Um, but I was like, hey, can you produce um, for my EP? Because I had these like these ideas and shit, and he came through. So he produced Sage, um, Only Friends, and Shorty Can't Me Creeping. Um, but yeah, with Sage though, that is, it, thank you for saying it's your favorite song. A lot of people, you know, they gravitate towards more like Turn Me Up, obviously Flip Phone, you know, the more like abrasive sort of songs on there. But Sage, I, I love recording Sage. So I did the hook um, and I only had the hook for a while. And I, was, I sent it off to like a few of my friends to see if they, they could do something with it. Um, you know, ask some vocals or whatever. And I, I never was able to do anything. So I'm like, all right, cool. I did the verse. Um, so I was technically homeless at the time. I was just like in between places because it, it, it was a rough patch. Um, but I was staying at my friend's house and we kind of had like a little mini studio set up in her like kitchen. 
Um, and so we were just there, me and my friends. We, I, re- I did my verse and then my mate, uh, Kobok, who, you know, does the second verse on that song, he brought in his workmate, Monty, and Monty does the background vocals on it. And so I told him the concept of the song. So the concept of the song was like, uh, it was very like Tupac inspired, you know? Here's that, because Tupac is that song, Letter to My Unborn, where it's like, okay, it's about this letter I'm writing to my child just in case I die, Okay. right? And so what I wanted to do with Sage was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. I called it Sage because Sage was, so, Sage is like what I think, if I ever have a daughter, what I'd want to name my daughter. Um, so I wrote the song in the perspective of like, okay, um, let's, so if I'm going to have a child and if I happen to die before she is born, I want some reassurance for her to be like, okay, it's okay. Cause you still have people around you. Um, that sort of thing like you know you, you don't feel lonely but it's okay there's still people here and with monty monty at the time he had a newborn daughter um so his, his daughter was just like born recently so i told him the concept for it and it was like oh okay it hit him in like in a different sort of space because you know obviously it's a lot more home to him because he just had a daughter um and so when he did the vocal, the background vocals it was so beautiful right because he he's not really an artist you know he, he's just like this guy who works and loves anime as a kid and he sings sometimes but he was hitting like these notes he had never hit before and it, we, we, so for, after he finished like doing the back of the was everything, we kind of just sat in silence for a little bit. I almost cried. I was like, yo, yeah, yeah, this is it. Um, and then it was kind of like dormant for a while. The song was like, whatever. And then Kobok, he eventually did the vocals out because I knew I wanted him on there. He did his verse and it was so much better than I was expecting. Like, cause he had like, you know, the normal rap class and he does like the sort of like singing towards the end of it. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Listening to the whole, like everything together. I'm like, yo, this, this is special. It is. It, it's such a beautiful song. And I'm like, I'm so happy I was able to create something like that because it's always, because yeah, I've always wanted to do something this special and it, it just felt different and it was, yeah, yeah. I love that song. Yeah, I, I yeah. can really hear the passion in it. So honestly, just hearing the like the story behind it, I'm mm. pretty sure I can appreciate it a lot more as well. Now that I, if I go back to it, and that is basically most of the interview actually. And I just had one last question for you. So you yeah. kind of mentioned it at the start, but what are your plans for the future? Um. Yeah. So hopefully some comeback bad posture stuff because as a group we haven't done anything since. 2020, the Kids in Space EP that we dropped in July of 2020. So it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully new music from us. So new Nyansen, I am working, I'm pro- I I want to do another mixtape just because I, I have fun doing mixtapes. It's, it's a lot more, I don't have to worry about structure really. I just, I just, I can just rap and just do whatever to like these right. beats that aren't mine. Um, so, do that and then i uh, have some songs i've been so i've been recording this album uh that i've had this idea for for like the past few years and this year we're going to finally start recording it um but we probably won't see that until maybe next year we'll see because i yeah um the albums it's going to be a lot more different from obviously the 2000 baby ep is going to go back to like our roots of just like okay this is from my heart and it's going to be a lot more Ah, um, I have, I'm going to be designing clothing. So my mate recently launched the clothing line and we're going to be collaborating. So hopefully some Janssen clothing will be out there. Um, maybe the end of the year, maybe earlier, we'll see. Um, and then I'll also be working on a short film. So, okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, we'll see. I, it's an idea, but I, whether it happens or not is still up in the air, but yeah, other way, new music, just a whole lot of new things this so year. Is this a, a, short film for, a short film for your EP or is it like just something completely separate? Something completely separate. Although, um, 
we have something in the works for the kids in space ep we did for the two-year anniversary this year mm. so keep an eye out keep an eye out <laughs> i will i will and honestly it really sounds like you had you have your whole year planned out yeah mostly because we we always plan our years at the end of the year whether we do everything you know but long, as long as we get like a few goals done we happy 